What's up guys, Eric with Pro Rebuild here with a long overdue video. Today we're going to cover the Ford EEC4 engine control module. These are found on 90-ish uh, to 1995 Ford F-150s, uh, F-250s up till 97, the Econoline vans, and even some Rangers have this. I mean, all Ford cars have this from that era, but the ones we cover are the trucks and vans. So these have a lot of different failure points. What happens, and there's videos on this that you can see, uh, these have capacitors that leak. I mean, all capacitors have a lifespan, and these are usually well past their prime. And when they leak, the electrolytic fluid that's inside shorts traces, it can burn traces up, it can blow components up. We've actually had some of these that have been on fire. I mean, we see all failure points on these. So because of that, we built a testing rig, which I have here, which tests the rudimentary function of these computers. It doesn't test everything, but it does cover the basics, the most common failure points. Uh, one of the things we see, the most common thing we see, is that there'll be an injector bank that doesn't work, or it won't power on, or the fuel pump stays on all of the time, or um, reference voltage is incorrect. It's supposed to have five volts reference. So uh, we check these things. We check the idle air control. Uh, we check to make sure that the injectors pulse. So we do that with this testing module. We, we, we rebuild these in-house. We replace capacitors, repair traces, replace other components that fail on these. And I want to kind of show you how this works. So here is our test rig. As you can see, it has a place to plug the computers in. Uh, it has an adjustable RPM. It has a light for the idle air control, for the fuel pump, for both injector banks. Also has a check engine light. Uh, this shows this displays the reference voltage and this flashes with the RPM. There's also an audible chime with that. So we're going to go ahead and this is a repaired computer. It's ready to go and make sure that this is on and okay so you can see both injector banks pulse. We've got fuel pump, our idle air control works and the check engine light is off. We also have five volts of reference and we can adjust here. We can put it down. We can turn it up. So this is what we use to test these. Now, we do not test the transmission part of these, but I'm going to kind of cover some bad computers. I've got a whole stack of bad computers here. I'm going to show you some things. And this, is, this would be a good tool to use while you're diagnosing your truck. I'm going to turn this off. And let's go with this one. Let's see what this does. Now, some of these are just crazy. Okay. So obviously something is shorted because the... <laughs> <laughs> the fuel pump, the check engine light, and the uh, voltage uh, are flashing with the RPM, and I can make it flash faster. Okay, so that one's bad. That one's definitely got some issues. Let's go ahead and unplug that and let that go. And this one complaint is the fuel pump stays on. So we have a check engine light, which is a problem right away. And we can also see that injector bank is not really pulsing correctly. And then... Yep, so this one's definitely got a problem. So this, let's try another one. Some of these you can actually smell have been on fire or close to it. So this one doesn't power up at all. This one's just completely dead. And as, as you can see, it's got a weak fuel pump signal. Idle air has got, is decent, but let's try some more. All right, this one apparently has a dead injector bank. It's just stuck on. So injector bank two is stuck on. And you can test a lot of this stuff with a volt gauge. If you have a, a multimeter, you can you can watch your injector banks. Uh, you can watch your reference voltage. You can watch fuel pump, idle air control, that kind of thing. So I wanted to cover the basics at how these computers function and also how they fail. If you have a multimeter or a voltmeter, you can get very far with diagnosing a bad engine control module. You can also remove it, open it, and inspect it. Most of the time, the damage is centered around the three capacitors that are on the inside. So there's a few functions of these that we don't test, the main thing being the automatic transmission. We are working on that, but I don't see too many failures in that arena. We also don't test the diesel truck computers on this testing rig. I have a completely different testing rig for those. Uh, I'll show that in another video. So you've gotten to that point where you've diagnosed your computer is bad. You want to buy a replacement. What do you need to know? Well, the main thing you need to know is the part number. This is super critical as far as buying a replacement. So 
the part number is printed on a white tag that's on the connector of these computers. It'll start off with like an F2TF or an F6TF, depending on what year your vehicle is. Then the, it'll, it has 12A650 in the center, which is Ford's uh, identifier for what an engine control module is. Uh, that's still used to this day. And then the last two, three, or four letters represent what engine, what transmission, what options. Those are all the parameters in which this engine control module uh, controls. So you have to match all of that. There's, you can't just go on eBay, type in 92 F-150 computer. Oh, I have a six cylinder. Oh, look, this fits my vehicle. Well, eBay says, gives you the green check. Well, that's not how that works. You have to know what transmission you have. You really have to know what your part number is. And unfortunately, a lot of these computers have been replaced with aftermarket remanufactured units, which do not have the part number on them anymore. They paint over them or they scrape the label off. I'm not quite sure why they do that. I don't really like that. But if that's the case, then sometimes you get lucky and you'll see a sticker on the inside of the door jam on vans and, and full-size trucks that'll have the strategy code. It'll say like NAP2 or BAN1. Uh, most of the time that sticker is gone. Uh, on Rangers, it's where the cowl meets the driver's side fender. Again, most of the time it's gone. So if you have no idea what part number yours is, you have one that's been spray painted and terribly rebuilt, which I'll get into that in a second. Uh, the best thing you can do is reach out, say, hey, this is what I have, and we'll try our best to match up what yours is. You just have to know what type of automatic transmission you have, or if it's a manual, you have to know a lot of details about it for us to even try to get down to what your computer is. Now back to that aftermarket engine control, that remanufactured one. I see some of the worst craftsmanship I've ever seen in some of those. I'd rather have a blown up original one that's been repaired than one that's been spray painted and God knows how they work on them. I'm not quite sure what they do. A lot of times they look really good. I'm not going to say they're all bad. But when you go to your local parts store and you buy a remanufactured computer, uh, it's like 50-50. Sometimes you get one that's done well or sometimes maybe they're starting out with one that has burned up. Like this one here has like been on fire. I would never try to repair this. We only repair ones we only actually let ones leave that are in the best condition. If it's been on fire or if it's had a major failure, we just use them for parts. There's just there's there's no sense in risking your time, our time, and and ultimately money. There's there's no point in that. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoy the video. If you have any questions on this, don't hesitate to ask. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll talk to you guys later.